This is Andy Tube, and this is cute, my Singer Model 99K. In this video, I'm going to remove and replace the feed regulator system on this machine. And this is commonly called the stitch length control and the stitch length lever. But Singer called it the feed regulator. And it is the feed regulator that controls the length of your stitch when you sew. The feed regulator controls how far the feed dog moves between each needle stroke. So if it's up here set to 30, that's approximately 30 stitches per inch. So the feed dog is barely going to be moving that fabric through as the needle bar goes up and down. If you go down here to the bottom to almost six, stitch six stitches per inch, it's going to be moving the fabric a lot farther uh, between the needle stroke. And the needle stroke is the same on every stitch. The needle just goes up and down. Uh, if you have a zigzag, of course, it goes side to side as it goes up and down. But it's really the feed regulator that controls the feed dog. And this is uh, what everybody sees, right? Uh, this is the stitch indicator plate. So you know where you're setting the feed regulator. And you know how many stitches you're going to get. And this uh, thumb nut is called the feed regulator thumb nut. And I really like this uh, indicator plate and the system here because of this little red dot. You see it has uh, dual slots here. And this is the first machine I've seen that on. Um, and as you move it up and down to set, this little red dot moves with it. And it's very easy to tell where you're setting the stitch. Where on the other machines that I've done that have a lever like this, you you just kind of eyeball where that lever is on the stitch and, you know, you go for it. So I, I like that uh, feature. I like it a lot. And the, the feed regulator thumb nut is attached to a feed regulator thumb nut nut screw stud. So it's a stud that goes through the thumb nut and right into the actual feed regulator part that's inside here. So I want to show you that now. I'm going to open it up here and uh, usually what I'll do is Turn this to the left to back the thumb nut as far as possible from the indicator plate. And on this model, there's just the, the stud that I mentioned, the screw stud that goes right through it. So you turn it left and then just keep turning it left and you're unscrewing the stud from the feed regulator part. Hmm. And this, this part is different than many I've seen. I'm going to hold that uh, thumb nut now and, and turn the screw stud to the left because I want to take it out of the thumb nut to show you. Uh, even though it looks uh, very similar to many of the others that I have done, I found this extra little part in here and I, I didn't know what it was at first. But um, there's actually a little spring in the screw stud. And I, whoop, sorry, it's oily. So, And there, the spring just fell out. Let me put it back in here to show you it in place. So in, in this head, 
of the screw stud, there's a hole drilled in it. And in that hole is this little tiny spring. And I can see that the spring has been damaged on one end a little bit, like it got caught up in the threads. But it's, I'll try and hold it here. Look at it, it's such a little guy. And I, I, I didn't get it at first. Well, first I didn't realize it was a, a spring, and then I thought, what the heck is a spring in there? But I think it's to put pressure on the thumb nut so that when you're turning the thumb nut, if you like to lock in a stitch, it helps keep the thumb nut in place to where you set it. Now that's that's only a guess, but I can't I can't think of why else there would be a a little baby spring in there. So there's a, a better view of the thumb nut. There's the back side looking it's it's smooth because it has a tendency to rub on here if you tighten it all the way and set the you know lock it in. And this this is very similar to other ones that I've done. So uh, let's go ahead then and take out these little screws that hold. Make sure I get it. Let's see if I can move this closer to us here. Maybe get an angle on it so my hand isn't hiding it. I make sure I have a well-fitting uh, screw tip here because these these can be in here, you know, ever since the machine left the factory. And I have found these screws to be soft. So um, be real careful if you force it. Um, you know, you might want to try some penetrating oil or heat or, um, you know, putting your screwdriver in there and, and giving it a couple of taps maybe to loosen it. The bottom one on this machine was in there very tight. The top one wasn't, it was tight, but not as bad. And when I took them off, the bottom one had a lot more dried oil and grease, so I think that's why it was giving me a harder time here. Okay, so there's the very typical size uh, stitch indicator plate screw. Let me pull this one out, then I can take off the indicator plate. And it's a very common looking thing. It's very well done with like a matching black finish and the gold uh, paint. And it's some kind of a brass or brass alloy, I think, is what these plates are made out of. And then here, here is something that you, is unique to uh, on this machine that I had never seen before. And that's this little red dot that actually uh, travels along in the second um, slot to help show you more accurately. And it's just like a little nail stuck into um, the feed regulator and it's got a little spring and this this is not uh, screwed in to the feed regular regulator it's it's just uh, really it's kind of like a nail with a little red tip so on this the head. A uh, red dot indicator just fits into a hole on the feed regulator. And let, let me show you the spring here for it. Um, and that apparently is to put a tension between the indicator plate and the face of the regulator to keep this little red dot nail in place and to, to hold it in. It just puts a little tension like that. Let's see if I can show you that feed regulator in place before I uh, go to take it out here. 
see if I can get this light up here. And, yeah, there. So you can see it now. You can see the front where on the right hole the the screw goes into, you know, and the left hole is a little red dot indicator. And as you move the lever, it slides up and down on a roller in there, and the roller is attached to the uh, feed fork connection bar that goes from the top horizontal arm down to the bottom of the machine and there we we see it so now on the other machines that I have done this feed regulator can just be pulled out now and it's on a little metal brick called a slide but this is on an, a steel roller and the roller is attached to the feed fork connection um, just just like the little brick slide would be but I think it's the smaller upright in the curve of it here that won't let me pull it off the front so I've got to like slide it off the back and when when you do that it'll fall to the bottom but this bottom is not as accessible as the other machines that I've done there's not as big an opening here and I think these three screws are what hold the upright to the bed of the machine so there's a little room in here you know and if if you're working on this and it drops to the bottom you should be able to maneuver it out but I'm I um, and get it back up here there's also this uh, rectangular opening here on the side and that's uh, hidden uh, partially by the motor mount bracket and the hand wheel so there's no plate that covers it it's just open and right here you can see the bottom of the feed regulator and I don't know back in here we get a pointer where's the pointer back in here you can just see the feed fork connection shaft as it's going down from the bottom okay and then here you see a, a heavy uh, feed regulator hinge screw and that's what attaches the regulator to the body and allows it to hinge um, back and forth or up and down as you as you move the thumb screw on the front so we're going to remove this hinge screw and I'm going to I'm going to try and hold that uh, while I do that and I, I know I can't slip it off the front I just haven't had any luck so the way I did it was slip it off the back and try and hold it as I maneuver it down into here and then out the side now I dropped it once doing that and that's how I know it, it, it goes to the bottom and you can somewhat maneuver it out but let's let's get this um, Let's get that hinge screw off of there. Let me turn off my extra light here. Let's get the hinge screw off of there. And then I can get the regulator out and you can see better what I've been talking about. This, this uh, hinge screw was in here very, very tight also. So you can see the regulator there, right? Okay. Now it's not in there tight now because when I reassembled it I didn't really I didn't really bear down on it. But by by putting my finger through the front here, kind of underneath the regulator, I try and support it so when I take the hinge screw out it, it will not fall. That's the goal. But don't be surprised if it does. And if you do 
uh, take this apart like this to clean it or to replace a bad roller or something um, you know if it drops down in there don't don't panic you keep turning this and turning this it's got some pretty heavy threads as you can imagine to hold this metal feed regulator in place and, and all the movement it's going to be doing Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Okay, there. So, there's the feed regulator hinge screw. Now, you see it's got this washer. And there's three ears or tabs on that washer. And it's called a friction washer. And the little tabs are bent or lean towards the machine. And that's so when you tighten it, it puts friction back against the head of the screw. So wherever you set the tightness, it stays there. And that's how you control how easy the stitch lever moves up and down. Because you, you want it firm enough that it won't move while you're sewing and you lose your stitch length. But you don't want it so hard that it's, you know, a big effort to, to set the stitch lengths. So that's what the friction washer accomplishes. If you just tighten the screw all the way, you wouldn't be able to move the feed regulator. Okay, now let's see if I can stick the other finger behind the feed regulator and push it back off of this roller I'm talking about. And this is about where I dropped it last time, or the first time I was trying to get it out. Oop. And I got oil, I got fresh oil on it now, so who knows, it might even be slipperier. These, I find these machines harder to work on in a way because the other ones I do oops, <laughs> the other ones I do have a lot bigger upright and, and it's easier to get in and work on stuff. But let's see, I, I drop that down and here's the regulator. So I'm going to try and tilt it, tilt it back up to the top. I kind of got it lost in there one time. It got behind those shafts and I really had to con contort the machine in different positions to get that thing out. And you can imagine it's a little tricky to put back in. But there. There's the regulator. So this is what's behind the indicator plate. And that's where the screw stud goes and the little red dot stud. And this, this big hole here is what the hinge screw goes through the casting and goes into here and holds that stud. But it allows it to hinge as you change the stitch length. And this is, this is very similar to other ones that I have seen except for this part is about I don't know it seems like about almost twice as big because of this roller system that this one uses compared to the little rectangle metal block called a slide block that slides in here and I don't know why they switched from a roller to a block I don't know if it was uh, you know, uh, saving money or if the roller developed problems after a hundred years or <laughs> I, I don't know. I actually got the roller out and uh, managed to get it back in. I was hoping maybe I could show you the roller in place here. Uh, let's see, let me put my hammer under here and See if I can get it propped up at all. Maybe I can lower this and look up into there a little bit. Get a light. 
there can you can you see the roller there and in the center of it is a hinge screw that comes from the back side of the feed fork connection shaft but it doesn't screw into the roller you you can pull the roller right off uh, towards you and this roller on my machine was very dry and uh, you know when I was moving um, the the screw stud before I heard a squeak and that turned out to be this uh, spring but but it would really hesitate and stuff and I I think it was that roller kind of dragging along here because it seems to me like there's wear marks especially um, towards the the front end you see that little dark triangle right there that is actually a wearing into the metal so uh, I don't know if you oil from above if it gets oil on that it was a little mucky uh, you know with dried up gunk on it and stuff like that so in my mind I think well once in a while it's going to be worth it to take off this the indicator plate and the screw stud and just go in and you know clean it with a little alcohol and put some oil directly on it you know maybe once a year or once every couple years to, to be sure that that roller but after I, I cleaned it um, and oiled it and put it all back together wow it, it really works smooth it just really rolled very nicely and as I said, you can you can pull the roller right off of that stud. It's just a very tight fit to get it back up between the end of the stud and this part of the casting to get it on there. It's a little tricky. You know, one one finger through the front like that, and the other finger in here and maneuvering around. I did it. But since mine is clean, I don't want to go through it again. But if you if you want to, what I did was take some needle nose and on mine and pull it off. And you can see it's starting to come off. So you can do it and clean all around there. You could also clean it in place just by, you know, an eyedropper with some alcohol, a rag stuffed in here to collect it, and you could kind of degrease it even with crud cutter and then oil it you wouldn't really have to take it off um, to clean it and you wouldn't have to take this off I don't think to clean it and stuff maybe you could clean the whole thing uh, in place and just be sure it was dry and then and then oil it good but I wanted to take it apart and clean it and I, I mean that's what I do in a restoration but it also shows you if if something is wrong and you need to replace it um, you see how it how it comes off so all that being said let's uh, let's talk about putting it back together now because that's that's a little tricky getting the feed regular feed regulator in there too and just leave it flat for now because you've, you've kind of seen everything. Um, just as taking it off, I found it easier to slide it off into the back off of the roller and drop it down behind and pull it out. That's how I attempt to put it back on. Uh, I guess I could try one more time here to slip it on but it seems like I can't get this part around the curve to get this back part onto the roller I, it just I'll try it again here but it just and it, 
if you shine a, a light in there while you're doing this, you know, I, I could see it, but it's like, man, I just can't get that feed regulator far enough from the edge of the roller to, to get it to slide on there. So I'm going to try again to, to put it on from the back side here. And if it's taking me too long, I'll just edit the video and tell you how long it took. <laughs> So you've got to kind of turn it and get that front part where the screws go in there. And then you got to be sure and get a finger underneath it. Oh, I got lucky. It fell right straight through this time. I'm trying to get it in there and, and kind of like get a finger below it so that I can push it up and onto the roller. And I, when I fooled around with this for the first time, I bet it took 10 or 15 minutes for me to to get it back on that roller. That's why I said if it's that bad this time, I'll just edit the I'll edit the video. Let's see if I go under the roller, turn it, and then try and hold it here and get a finger under it. Then turn it, turn it upright, because I've got to get the hole in it up to here for the hinge screw. But I've, I have to have it slid onto that roller first, or else you know it's not going to work and it's just not going to line up. Uh, let's see here. Well, if anybody watching has ever done this and and uh, knows a better way, please leave that in the comments. Let me look in here and see. Maybe I'm not on the roller. Uh huh. Let me push it back here. I might be the feed regulator might be rolling along under. The roller. No, I'm 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 sure. I I can see in there real well, and I can see that that roller is right where it should be on in in the in the trough, so to speak, of that regulator. So what I've done is lifted the regulator up a little bit and I and I think I think maybe that's the spot. Yeah, I think I think I it started applying more pressure and I think uh, just barely wiggling the regulator and pushing the screw in. I think the screw actually entered into the beginning of the thread. There we go. Okay. Once once we can get this uh, hinge screw started into the feed regulator, I just keep my finger under here to, to hold the front of it um, in place so I'll be able to put in the stud and the red dot. There we go. Now how tight you tighten this um, is a personal thing of, of how firm you want the regulator to work. So when you first tighten it, um, you know, just snug it up so that so that the regulator here is not. Um, see if you can see that here. So it's not just like uh, flopping up and down. See how the regulator's here? Now I can I can push it, but it's pretty it's pretty firm to move. But look, if I loosen that screw, see how it fell down there? And now it's a lot easier to move. 
if I loosen it more, it it just kind of flops around, it goes way down in there. And if I if I uh, lift it up, ouch! <laughs> if I lift it up here, um, it's going to it's it it's very easy to to it's too easy to move. I guess let me put it like that. So you want it uh, semi-firm so it'll stay there while you finish up assembly. And then we'll adjust it for our personal preference once we get everything back together. Makes sense, right? A little more light here. So what I want to do now is uh, put the rest of the parts back together. So I'm going to start putting that uh, screw stud back into the thumb nut, and then when I get when I get close to the spring hole, I'm going to find what I did with my little spring, and I'm going to put the damaged end back up where I I found it. If yours isn't damaged, you, you should just be able to put the the spring in there either way but since mine has got bent over the years um, what I found I want to do is hold that spring down whoops get on the whoop <laughs> my magnetic pliers pulled the screw out I want to hold the edge of the spring down while I tighten it more so I can get this the spring under the edge of the thumb nut and when I was fooling around with it before I found this was the easiest way just squeeze one side of that spring and get it in there and see now it's it's almost completely underneath there and now I can keep turning it and get that spring I guess I'm going to call it a tension spring um, trying to think if the parts list I had for it had I don't remember even seeing it on the parts Um, no, they did call it the feed regulator thumb nut screw stud friction spring. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I've got that twisted on all the way. And I want to set my little red dot post or the stitch indicator with the stitch indicator spring on it I want to set that in the in the hole of the feed regulator in the left side like that and it doesn't screw in like I said that does nothing holds it in there except the tension of it once you once you put the indicator plate back on So I'm going to put the a screw stud through the right slot here and I'll get it started into the feed regulator get it started real well mm -hmm. And then I'm going to actually put the plate on before I finish tightening that up, I think. So I'm going to use my little spring screwdriver to hold the stitch indicator plate screw. And I guess I'll start at the bottom. I don't, it doesn't really matter here. So. I have to push that indicator plate back against that uh, spring.
to get the plate uh, flush with the face of the machine so that I can get the screw in there. Maybe I'll try the top screw. Maybe that'll be easier for me. See if I put that about the middle. There, that's actually easier than doing the bottom one first. Famous last words, huh? <laughs> So I'll push back against that spring now and I'll hold the plate flush to the face of the machine and see if I can get that plate screw in there. There we go. Not tight, but in. And then let's get the bottom screw in there. Hold the plate down here on the bottom. Uh oh. Let's put in the bottom screw now. So I'll push back on that spring again. Move this up so I can get a good view and see if I can't line this up good. There we go. Oops. Doesn't want to start in there. There we go. Okay. Now I'll snug these up. Now this one had a ways to go, huh? Okay. And I'll test this out. The resistance is pretty good, but I want to screw this the rest of the way in. So I'll come in here on the screw stud, there we go, and I'll tighten that all the way in because you don't, you don't want that coming out or vibrating loose. Now I can lock in a stitch length by turning that up against the plate. And that's just so, like, if I'm sewing at 10 and I'm going to be doing reverse, if I lock it in, when I come to reverse, I can throw it up and throw it down, and it stops where I had it locked in. So some people like that. Uh, I know my wife doesn't use that. If she wants to reverse, she'll just reverse and come back down like that without the stop feature. But I can see this, this is working a lot better, but I still can kind of feel it scraping on that little bent spring. So someday I might pull that spring and go down to the hardware store. And I don't have much luck finding vintage Singer nuts and bolts and stuff uh, of standard size. But that spring, I might be able to find a little spring like that. Who knows? Um, I did bend the spring a little bit just with my pliers trying to reshape it and that helped. So that actually uh, that actually helped. It's moving a lot smoother than it was before. So once you're all assembled like this, before you put a hand wheel back on or anything, you you want to adjust the hinge screw so that this has the firmness that you like you know if it's again if it's if it's too loose it's not going to stay there while you sew let me tighten it just a little bit more to where you move it 
and it, it kind of stays there but you'll find as you're sewing that it'll it'll do creep it'll it'll kind of vibrate down and before you know it instead of sewing at 12 you're sewing at 8 stitches per inch on the other hand if you over tighten it it's it's like really hard to to move up and down and you don't want that you want a nice firm smooth operation and once once you put the hand wheel on that's all covered and you won't be able to get access to that so that's something you want to do now yeah and it feels good it feels firm but I can control the movement when it's real hard to push you push so hard to get it going it's hard to stop where you want but that feels really smooth to me okay so there is removing and replacing the feed regulator and how some of the parts work and go together alright and comments and and questions and suggestions of easier methods or anything like that those are always welcome so if if you feel inclined to do so share with the rest of us in the comment section below okay thanks for watching very much I, I uh, hope that you'll come back to my channel whenever you have time take care